Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, February 23rd, 527 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. May corn futures down a half cent at 673 and three quarters. May soybeans down four and a quarter at 1530 and a half. May Chicago wheat down a quarter at 749 and three quarters. May Kansas City wheat down five at 864 and a half. May spring wheat up a quarter cent at 909 and a quarter. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it as always. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, smash that subscribe button. We're super close to 8,000 subscribers. I think we can get there this week or next week. Appreciate it as always. If you'd like some additional info from me, visit my website, www.standardgrain.com. I had a couple of premium videos that you guys may want to check out. Uh, Yesterday, I was joined by my friend Steve Johnson, who I refer to as the crop insurance king. Uh, We talked about crop insurance decisions for 2023, some things to be aware of best practices, all of that stuff. Uh, Today's video that I'm going to blast out uh, later this morning is Thoughts on Managed Bushel Programs. I was joined by my friend Matt Bennett from agmarket.net. We did a pretty detailed discussion about uh, managed bushel programs, over-the-counter products as it relates to grain marketing, the pros and cons of all of this stuff, best practices if you're going to get involved. If you guys are interested in this stuff, I'll send you these videos today. Uh, Sign up at standardgrain.com, 50 bucks a month. Cancel at any time, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. Grain shipments out of Ukraine have slowed. Reports indicate that some traders are unwilling to sell Ukrainian grain grain uh, at the moment given uncertainty regarding the extension of the Black Sea grain deal. And if Russia doesn't extend this deal, it'll expire, I believe, on March 18th. The Wall Street Journal reports that only th- or that 3 million metric tons of grain were shipped in January. That was down from 3.7 million in December. And so far in February, they've only shipped a million and a half metric tons. There is a normal seasonal decline during this first part of the calendar year. The scope of the decline, however, is a little bit greater than usual. Sources in Ukraine continue to indicate that Russia is deliberately delaying cargo inspections, resulting in a large backlog of ships. Uh, USDA estimates that Ukrainian wheat exports will be down 29% this year uh, versus last year. Corn exports down 17% is the projection. Um, So there is some concern in the Black Sea apparently regarding this deal. Nobody told the U.S. wheat futures market, which has reverted lower here uh, the last couple of days. USDA will release Ag Outlook Forum estimates this morning at 6 a.m. Central Time. So by the lot by the time a lot of you guys listen or watch or watch this, uh, these numbers will already be out. Reuters actually ran a poll of analysts in regard to the acreage numbers. They're trying to guess the guess here because USDA is just guessing at this. These are not survey based numbers. But in any case, ahead of this deal, 90.9 is the average guess for corn acres, 88.6 for soybean acres. This should not be a market moving event. The more important acreage. Uh, numbers come out on March 31st. That's your prospective plantings report. That's survey-based, and then you get your real look at the new crop balance sheet or the first look in May. So this thing's kind of like a placeholder. I mean, could it move the market? I guess. Things are pretty slow, especially in regard to corn, so maybe we could use some fresh news. Uh, This deal, again, will be out at 6 a.m. Central, and again, will be out by the time a lot of you guys watch or listen here this morning. Brazil has halted beef exports to China after confirming a case of mad cow disease. Uh, The case was confirmed by Brazil's ag ministry yesterday. Shipments were halted immediately as part of a trade protocol between the two countries. They have an agreement in place in regard to this whole uh, deal. Brazilian authorities will soon hold conversations with China in order to resume trade flows. Brazil is by far the largest exporter of beef to China behind only Australia and Uruguay. The U.S. is a much smaller exporter of beef to China. Uh, China has been the world's largest beef importer for several years, and Brazil is the largest exporter by a fairly wide margin. The U.S. is the second largest beef exporter. So if this thing becomes extended, and this is an issue where Brazil can't ship beef to China for a while, uh, a lot of the business is probably going to go to places like I don't know, maybe Argentina, maybe Australia. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe the United States, I suppose it could be a positive. I'm not sure how the cattle market's going to react to this today, but uh, that news was floating around. Argentina will see only sparse rains over the next 10 days. Some key corn and soybean areas will see no rain at all. Others may see up to an inch or two. My general understanding is that the weekend frost event resulted in only very limited and isolated damage. I've heard some chatter of an Argentina soybean crop that may ultimately fall below 30 million metric tons, which is very low. Nobody's out there saying that publicly right now. That would mark a 40% decline versus what was expected before the growing season. 
So I think I think some of the uh, whisper numbers out there are much lower than what the the trade has indicated or what the private groups have indicated with their official estimates. Argentina has had its worst drought in 60 years. Uh, there's been some relief during the first part of the calendar year here, but it's not enough. And again, over the next 10 days, it's just going to be sparse. Some of these soybean areas are going to see next to nothing in regard to rainfall, so it's going to be variable. Uh, short crop in Argentina, no surprise there. Uh, Brazil is going to be wet, and I mean overall things in Brazil are pretty good. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a record crop, 150 million metric tons, give or take. Uh, they could have some issues in regard to planting delays with that second corn crop. But the moisture profile in Brazil has, has been OK. They've caught the rains that they've needed. So crops there should be good. The U.S. may release intelligence that indicates China's potential plan to supply weapons to Russia. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has warned uh, recently that China is seriously considering supplying arms to Russia. Discussions regarding a potential public release of some new intelligence comes this week ahead of Friday's United Nations Security Council meeting. Uh, Blinken is going to address the Security Council to essentially kind of mark the one year anniversary of Russia's initial invasion of Ukraine. The White House National Security Council declined to comment on this. This is all reporting via a Wall Street Journal exclusive article. An anonymous Western official told the Wall Street Journal this. Until now, there has been a certain amount of ambiguity about what practical help China might give Russia. The intelligence makes the situation much less ambiguous. So they have some new intelligence indicating that China is at least considering supplying arms to Russia. China's denied all of this. A Chinese official responded, he said this, It is a known fact that NATO countries, including the U.S., are the biggest source of weaponry for the battlefield in Ukraine, yet they keep claiming that China may be supplying weapons to Russia. So more back and forth here uh, in regard to Ukraine, Russia, China, U.S., East versus West, all of that sort of stuff. The Federal Reserve anticipates further rate hikes in order to bring inflation down to their 2% target. Minutes from the uh, February meeting were released yesterday. The statement said this. Participants observed that a restrictive policy stance would need to be maintained until the incoming data provided confidence that inflation inflation was on a sustained downward path to 2%, which was likely to take some time. Uh, The minutes revealed that almost all members felt that that quarter rate point hike that they uh, made earlier this month was appropriate. A few members actually wanted a half point hike. Uh, The statement went on to say this. Participants generally noted that upside risks to the inflation outlook remained a key factor shaping the policy outlook and that maintaining a restrictive policy stance until inflation is clearly on a path toward 2% is appropriate from a risk management perspective. So interest rate markets right now favor another quarter point hike from the Fed in March. That meeting is going to be on March 21st and 22nd. Stock market doesn't like any of this. The S&P 500 closed lower for a fourth consecutive day yesterday uh, following this release. Remember, guys, March grain options expire on Friday. If you are tomorrow, if you have any remaining open positions there, make sure you take a look. Cattle market was mixed yesterday. Feeders were higher. There's been some light cash cattle trade in the uh, 160 to 162 neighborhood so far this week. U.S. dollars about flat. The S&P's up 15. The Dow Jones up 60. Gold's off nine bucks. Crude oil up 75 cents at 74.70 in the April WTI. Have a great day, guys. I will talk to you Friday.